In this video, I'm gonna take you through the steps I took to create a gravity-fed irrigation system for my garden using a rain barrel and CPVC pipe and fittings. It's a pretty basic system. It's a pretty simple system to set up. It's nice in its design that we can extend it and customize it each year going forward. Um, and it's also very cost effective, which is very nice. Um, so let me show you how I set up my system and hopefully you'll get some ideas for your own. So the heart and soul of this system is the rain barrel. That's where we're getting all the water that we're gonna irrigate the garden with. And we have two 65 gallon rain barrels around the back of our garage, receiving water off our roof, through the gutter, down the downspout, and into this homemade two inch PVC diverter system that I put together with a PVC pipe and some elbows, and then a two inch to three inch reducer fitting that just bridges the diverter to the downspout itself. And it divides the water pretty equally between the two barrels. It's just basically push fit together. We don't have to glue it up because um, this isn't pressurized or anything. So it doesn't really leak when you've just pressed the pipes together. So that's the beauty of it too, is that it can take it apart in the winter if we want to, or we can even, you know, flap one of the sides straight up if we wanted to not fill one of the barrels right away um, and just solely fill the other barrel. The one thing that you'll have to consider when using a rain barrel, especially if your yard is like ours and you have big trees that drop all sorts of stuff on your roof and all sorts of debris and, and things like that, is put some, some sort of a filter or a gutter guard in your gutter. We have the big kind of open cell foam uh, gutter guards in and with that system, we don't get any of the debris and the gunk and all the stuff that comes off our roof going into our rain barrels. At the top of our rain barrels, there is also a plastic mesh screen there that, you know, if anything does get through or anything falls on our rain barrel itself, that doesn't get into the system and, and clog it up. Um, but also down the line in the in the system, we do have um, places that we can open it up and flush out the system if anything does get in there. Another thing that you'll want to consider is the spigot coming out of your rain barrel. Um, if yours is like ours, it just came with a really basic stop valve uh, spigot that it doesn't really let a whole lot of water through the um, the opening in the rain barrel at one time. Um, it's a little tedious to operate, and it's just altogether something that should go in the garbage. I really like the ball valve quarter turn handle that we got at Lowe's. It's about 10 bucks. And when you install it and you open up that valve for the first time, you know where the 10 bucks went because you'll be able to fill up a watering can in record time with one of these things. Um, so it's well worth the upgrade to your spigot if you're going to consider some uh, system like this, um, just because you'll want to push as much water through that pipe as you can to sort of pressurize it, and that's what's really going to feed our, our system. So from the spigot, we start our maze of pipe that goes between the rain barrel and the garden. Um, I'm using CPVC pipe. It's pretty much the same thing as regular PVC pipe. Um, it's a little bit different application if you're using it in a, in a professional sense. Um, for our purposes, um, the pipe is cheap. It's um, about two bucks to three fifty for a ten inch length of either half inch or three quarter inch pipe. Um, it's got all sorts of fittings that we can use with it. You can glue it together if you want, although we're not going to glue ours together because um, if we need to replace any sections of pipe or if we want to change things up or uh, take it apart for the winter, we can do that. Um, nothing that we're going to do is going to be pressurized enough that we'll have to worry about it coming apart. Um, it's also a nice kind of a beige color compared to the stark white of PVC. All of our piping is going to be above ground, and so it's a little less jarring to the eye than um, white PVC to have this stuff kind of above ground. So it's easy to work with. Um, we can just cut it with a pipe cutter or a hacksaw, or you can use a miter saw like we do. Um, it, all the fittings just slip together. It's very easy to assemble. So you just cut all your pipes um, to the appropriate lengths, just slip them together with the fittings. And it's basically just put, like putting together Legos. It's really not all that complicated to do. Um, so from our rain barrel, we're using three quarter inch CPVC pipe all the way to the garden. From our spigot, we have a female threaded CPVC to pipe adapter. Um, we run some 
Teflon tape around the threads of our spigot and using a wrench with just enough pressure, don't over tighten it because you don't want to crack this thing, but just enough pressure to um, to get the threads seated on there. I'm not 100% certain that the threads actually match between this fitting and the, the hose threads that come on the spigot, um, but ours worked fine and it doesn't leak and, and it should be absolutely fine in this case. So then we just kind of cut our pieces of CPVC. I'm using uh, 45 degree angles to go around our barrel to the back of our garage. Then we elbow and run a straight line down the length of our garage. I'm using a couple elbows to kind of run around another downspout and then basically running a straight path all the way down to our garden. I have it held up on our fence using um, just plastic cable ties. Um, down to our garden and then we're going to use from there three quarter inch to half inch tees and 90 degree elbows so basically all the ports at the end we're kind of building a manifold all these ports are going to be half inch to accept half inch pipe right now i have a series of six half inch ports at the head of our garden um, any unused ones i would just um, stop up with a short scrap a section of half inch pipe and a cap. Um, basically what I've done here is create this manifold that we can add lines anytime we want to. Um, we can cap off ones that we're not using. It makes it very customizable and extensible. Um, I can basically put this system together as I'm planting the garden and I can just have water going directly to the plants and areas that I want it to go to. Um, it also makes it a very good system for conserving water that way. So in our garden, it's a long rectangular garden. We have a path running down the center, and I have two lines going directly down the center of each side of the garden. Um, and then I also have one uh, shorter 10-foot auxiliary branch that basically goes underneath the, um, the mesh trellis that our peas and beans and stuff will climb up. Um, but otherwise, we're creating one big kind of rectangular loop um, using the two center channels on each side of the path. They're connected by elbows and a short uh, section of pipe down at the end. Um, and then I've also kind of fashioned a little square on the right side um, that runs around a little patch of bunching onions that I have all planted together. The reason that I have these connected in a loop down at the end, I don't have any any holes uh, for watering down at the end. Basically, I'm just connecting these two in a circular path that helps kind of equalize the pressure on both sides of the garden. Um, on the right side, we have a lot of stuff planted out. So if we were just to cap this out uh, directly at the end, it would work, but some of the holes at the very end don't have as much pressure um, to throw water as the stuff at the top part, part of the pipe. Um, so it just kind of helps equalize out the pressure a little bit. Now the key to making this kind of a system work that I learned through trial and error is that you have to drill really, really, really small holes. Um, I drilled my first section with the smallest drill bit that I had in my standard pack of drill bits. So it was probably 1 16th of an inch. Those holes were really too big. Um, not only would they just emit way too much water way too fast, um, it would also not let the water reach all the way down the pipe. Um, so it wasn't even and it just didn't really work all that well. So the key to this is to drill very, very, very small holes. You actually have to get a pack of micro drill bits. Um, they have these at most hardware stores for about three or four bucks. It comes with a pack of like 20 or 30 of these very small drill bits in various sizes. And we're talking like a fraction of a millimeter in size and up. Um, I used ones that were probably not the smallest, smallest in the pack, but almost the smallest. Um, we're talking very, very small holes. You'd probably want to drill the smallest holes first, see how it works in your system. And if you want a little bit more flow, or you could even drill different sized holes for different plants. So if you wanted to really soak your tomatoes, you could drill one that's a little bit um, bigger, or you could drill multiple holes reaching that plant, um, which I've done in some cases. Um, that works as well. You can drill pretty much as many holes as you want. I mean, you don't want to fill them with a ton of holes because 
um, basically the point of the system is to target the water to where you're uh, where you're wanting to go but I find the the really nice thing about this system is once we have the three quarter inch line to the garden and have our little manifold system at the top we really can um, get this system set up the way that we want to so if I wanted to I could ditch the half inch pipes at the end of the season um, and replace them in the next season and drill all new holes or if you drill a hole badly or you want to reuse pipe you can basically just take um, vinyl electrical tape I just have a, a roll of white electrical tape and just kind of wrap it around the pipe to, to um, cover over the hole and basically you're all done and repaired and you can drill new holes so I run my pipe as I'm planting um, kind of have that all set up before I start drilling any holes. I open up the spigot to pressurize the water throughout the system, and then I take my drill bit and I drill um, holes directed at the at each plant individually. Um, you'll probably want to drill um, as the pipe is laying in the garden in the center or slightly um, below the center to kind of. Um, direct the water more down at the plant depending on how high up the um, the width of the pipe that you drill will affect how high or low it throws the stream of water so if you drill it too high and you have a full rain barrel sometimes you might be throwing water a little bit f too far the other thing to kind of bear in mind and learn from my experience too is to be very careful when you're drilling these holes I ended up drilling two of my fingers <laughs> when I did this um, so I would actually you know place the drill bit on the pipe make sure you don't have any fingers behind the direction that you're drilling in kind of start out slow and once it kind of catches on the pipe and starts drilling a hole then you can kind of ramp the speed up a little bit um, otherwise you know you might slip also with these micro drill bits being that they're so very tiny they break really really easily that's probably why they give you like 30 of them in a pack is because they are very very kind of brittle so be very careful when you're drilling because you might snap off um, a drill bit or two when you're doing this um, so basically I have holes drilled to the individual plants and I have the system all connected together and all I have to do now is open up the valve for three or four minutes and I have my garden entirely watered I have water only going to the places in the garden that I want water to go I'm not saturating the whole garden I'm not spending a lot of money um, just mass spraying the garden like I used to I'm basically taking the free water from our roof and directing it at the plants on the days that I need to water it's a really great system it saved me a lot of water um, actually you'd be surprised how much water you can spray um, spread in your garden with a system like this we have a 65 gallon um, rain barrel and I thought oh I can water for days and days and days and days um, with this but even only watering the specific plants in the garden and having it only open for a couple of minutes I would drain my rain barrel pretty darn fast so one of the things that I did is um, later on after I discovered that I drained my rain barrel so fast is I added a way that I can um, run our garden hose into the same system w without taking the thing all apart um, that's the reason that I don't like um, gluing this system together is I can basically change things up as I need to as my needs change so what I did is I replaced the um, right angle elbow at the spigot with a T and then just added a little short uh, piece of pipe and a cap and that's what I have on there most of the time when the rain barrel is full when the rain barrel is out what I can do is I close the spigot I take the cap off and then I have this little section of um, flexible garden hose um, with a little shutoff valve and then a three-quarter inch female threaded adapter um, attached to it I attach my garden hose to that and then basically plug it onto this T and then turn on my garden hose and I can basically feed um, city water directly into the same piping that I normally run water out of my rain barrel. I have the little valve on the hose to kind of regulate how much pressure I'm putting into the system. I don't want to put full pressure on it because I don't want to, you know, blow any of these um, fittings off, um, but I can 
put a fair amount of pressure through the system, you'll, you'll know how much pressure that you want to put through it because the more pressure you put on it, the more the, um, the little emitters that you drilled in the pipe will throw water. So if you're throwing water straight out the side of your garden, you know, you're putting a little bit too much pressure in it, but that's nice that I can regulate it that way. And I can put just enough water in there. Um, the other thing about this little garden hose adapter thing that I put together is, um, if I was going to run into uh, a very rain free week and my rain barrel is empty, um, I can actually plug it into the little, um, overflow pipe that I, um, put on the second barrel and fill the rain barrel up with city water just so I can still continue to use mainly the barrel to be my feeding device for this irrigation system. Bear in mind that in my area you are required by code to have a backflow preventer in the line um, at the house spigot um, to make sure that if you are you know spraying anything on your yard from your hose that that stuff doesn't go backwards into the um, city water supply. Make sure you have one of those things on there if you're doing this where you're filling um, your rain barrel with city water or you're putting um, water through the irrigation system like this just to make sure that, you know, if you do have any sort of funky little contamination in your in your uh, system here that it's not going through and contaminating the city water system. though. So that's very, very important. So make sure that you do that. So basically... I really like the way that the system turned out. I mean, it's very, very flexible. I like the ability that I have to change it up, to add things to it, um, to customize it by year. The pipe is cheap enough that if I didn't want to go through and repair the pipe each season, um, putting holes in different places, I can basically just um, recycle the pipe, get new sections, plug them into my little manifold at the head of the garden and design a whole new system for that year depending on how I want to plant the garden out so I think you know this is a pretty good system I I really like it it's worked a lot better than I was actually figuring it was going to work out and um, it's pretty cheap and it it works really well I'm, I'm just I'm just head over heels about it so um, I hope that gives you an idea of how to build a system like this for your purpose. You might have a bigger or smaller garden than we do. Um, you could probably just remove the rain barrel entirely and just feed in a garden hose like we did and just have this be kind of your permanent infrastructure for f watering your garden from city water pressure and stuff. Um, but, you know, it's, it's a pretty good system and, and I hope it helps you out a lot. Let me know what you think. Uh, leave me a comment in the uh, comment section here on YouTube. And um, good luck and happy gardening.